Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Charlottesville incident and Trump's response to it. Trump should not have singled out the so-called Nazis for special opprobrium. By doing so, he is aiding the media in their corrupt enterprise. What is the media doing? Well, here's the situation. You have two evil groups. When you have two evil groups, one of whom is markedly less violent and more fringe, and the media singles out one for special emphasis and condemnation, something is wrong. The effect of doing that is to legitimize the side one is silent about. So when you have Antifa and the alt-right, and you criticize only the alt-right, and you do so in terms that are particularly emotional, which is what I've seen, because I think people who, even people who are anti-communist, they, it's, it's hard, it's really hard to shield yourself from the constant 24-7 blast that says Nazis are a special kind of evil and communism, eh, it just doesn't work. And so even people who hate communism, they just have been inculcated with this special emotional reaction to fascism. And racism. Well, particularly racism of whites against non-whites. Because Antifa is the reverse and they don't particularly get emotional about that. So, when the media singles out the alt-right for special condemnation, the effect of that, in the context we're in, where Antifa is right there, and is more massive, more destructive, the effect of specially con condemning this one group is to legitimize this other group that you're being silent about, or just not being as emphatic about. Now, Antifa is a violent mob that has been coalescing around the country to violently shut down free speech by force. And that's what they were doing in Charlottesville. Now, the fact that some guy ran over this violent mob with a car and killed one of them and injured a few, regardless of my evaluation of the guy, I have no sympathy for the woman who died or any of the Antifa or counter-racism protesters. These people have committed violence in the name of shutting down free speech, free speech being the only alternative to widespread generic violence. And they have called everybody racist. I mean, normal people who are obviously not racist. So when you call everyone a Nazi and you advocate for violence, and then you get a group of Nazis who use violence against you, you have no sympathy from me. As far as I'm concerned, these are two groups of primitive anti-intellectual savages, and the fact that Antifa happened to be the first side to lose a man or a woman is just coincidence and unimportant. So Trump came out and he made what I thought was a good statement, condemning both sides. Good, as good as Trump can be, it was wishy-washy. He didn't name groups and condemn both sides. He just said, many sides, many sides. Um, and he does have a history of obviously ignoring 
racists who support him. And I don't think that's because he's racist. I think it's because he is an authoritarian. And I mean, I mean, you can see this. People who praise him, he says, oh, they're the best ever. This is the greatest newspaper of all time. Very good journalists. Somebody criticize him. Oh, I think you're corrupt. I think you're price fixing. Whatever. I mean, he's a non-objective authoritarian. Truth doesn't matter. If you're on his side, he will say good things about you. If you're not on his side, he'll say bad things about you. And those good or bad statements have no relationship to the truth. They just have a relationship to those people's relationship to Trump. But condemning both sides was far superior to him them then coming out after the media cried about it and specially, specifically condemning uh, this Unite the Right Richard Spencer uh, rally, which, I mean, you know, the reason they're trying to unite the right, even though nobody but them showed up, is because they want the cover of more legitimate views. This is how evil always works. It can't win. It just needs to tear away some good. So evil always needs the cover of more legitimate uh, ideas or movements. So, as far as I can tell, uh, this group of white nationalists, with whom I uh, disagree in the strongest terms possible, uh, showed up and were just having a legitimate rally. I mean, legitimately legal rally. They have the right. <clears throat> And then Antifa showed up as usual and started causing violence. Now, whatever, maybe some people from the right fought back or even in some localized uh, incidents were the aggressors. That is irrelevant. In broad terms, we know Antifa are the aggressors and have been across the country and they're the ones with the history of violence, not Richard Spencer and these other people. So, if you are going to come out and condemn just the Nazis, what you are doing in this context, <laughs> I mean, this, think about this in simple to concretize this and you will see exactly what I mean. Suppose, uh, you know, you and your brother are fighting over something, right? And, you know, you're both being equally bad. You're picking on each other, hitting each other. And then your mom comes in and points to just one of you, points to you and says, you're being really bad. And then your father comes home and he says, well, what's going on here? And she says, this Johnny is being really bad. Whatever your name is, is being really bad. And she's silent or tepid about the other one. Well, you know what the effect of that is. Suppose there are two murderers standing there and all anybody will talk about, the press comes and says, this guy's a murderer. The other murderer is standing right next to him, but they only talk about this guy. What is the effect of that? It's to say that this other guy that nobody is talking about, he's not a murderer. He's not worthy of condemnation. Maybe he was justified in some way. That is exactly the effect you get when you have the social justice racists and the alt-right racist, and you only condemn the alt-right. The whole effect of that is to say, well, the social justice people are fine. Even though they are much bigger, they have Incre almost total institutional control of the media and uh, all creative fields. And they are far more violent. In fact, you might even say they are violent and the all right really hasn't been except in retaliation as far as I can tell. So having Trump come out and specifically condemn one side and the side that is slightly less bad is uh, 
cowardly appeasement and uh, a very bad thing. They play this game where they can say anything they want about the Nazis. And Nazis equal anything bad. So if they say, oh, well, you know, these Nazis, they're actually uh, lizard men trying to control the world. And then you say, well, I mean, I disagree with them and I think they're evil, but they're not lizard men. They're not aliens. They say, oh, you're defending Nazis. So you can't, you can't point out <clears throat> that one side is getting special emphasis without them appealing to people's stupidity, irrationality, and dishonesty and trying to accuse you of defending the alt-right. All I am doing is trying to accurately identify who is who. And I see the alt-right and I say their ideas are evil, but they're basically not being violent. And I see the social justice advocates and Antifa, and I say, their ideas are evil, and they are being violent, and they have much more power and much greater numbers. And then when I see the media come out and get the emphasis wrong, I have to point that out as wrong. Not as a defense of any side, but as a defense of the truth and objectivity. So, uh, just be aware, try to... Just keep in your mind that there's nothing specially, especially evil about the alt-right. I mean, in a certain sense there is, because they're more primitive. Racism is worse than communism in the sense that it's... At least communism is an abstract idea, whereas... Racism is just, you know, white skin good, black skin bad, or the reverse. So, I mean, the social justice people and the racist alt-right are just the worst of the worst. A communist is a much more interesting person to talk about. But when you see the media doing this and going after one side and the side that isn't quite as bad... Uh, you should condemn that because its effect and the motive behind it is to legitimize the violent social justice mob. Don't let them get away with that. I'm not. Antifa is disgusting. They are... People calling this Charlottesville rally the guy driving his car into the protesters terrorism. Please. That is all Antifa is. That is all these violent mobs shutting down free speech rallies are. That's terrorism. But nobody brings up the terrorism card until, oh, it's white men against non-whites. Even though the other side is far more prominent and frequent, they don't care until it's a white guy doing it. So don't let them legitimize uh, violence in the name of social justice by calling for special condemnation of other kinds of violence, which is what everybody who is calling for this kind of special condemnation is doing. And people I like are doing this. Jerome Brooke is doing this, Ben Shapiro is doing this. A lot of people are doing this and it is the wrong way to go. Its effect is to legitimize the side and they do this lazy way of thinking of, well, I mean, Nazis are evil. The alt-right is evil and wrong, so, why not specially condemn them? Because when you do it in the full context we have now, it says the other people are fine because you didn't specially condemn them, even though they're worse, which makes it even worse. 